When we're creating a database here, I'm just talking about creating the shell of the program where we can actually store our tables in. Because remember, any foundation of a database here, at least with access, has got to have tables. Without tables, you can't store the data. Think of it like when you create a document, unless you actually type in some text in that document, it means nothing. I mean, you can create one and save it, and you can give it a name and call it recipes, but unless you actually type some text in or some data, the title of the document means basically nothing because there's no data in it. And that's what we're going to do is we're going to create a shell of a program here like the document, give it a name, we're going to call it computer inventory, and then what we're going to do is after we create the shell of the program, the database, we're actually going to create the tables where we can store our data into it, all about anything that's got to do with keeping track of our computer inventory for our employees, like which employees have the newest computers, which employees we need to update, their asset tag numbers, basically the barcode where you scan it in. So that way we can keep track of all the computers that are being used, not being used, and so forth. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and open up Access, double click on the um, shortcut, and you can see right here that there's a template that just deals strictly with asset tags. You see that little barcode? That's what an asset tag is. You know, when you go ahead and go to the grocery store and they scan in your product, that's how they keep track of the products that are coming or going and what they have to order more of. So what I want to do is come in the middle section here and click on the blank database button. Over to the right hand side it opens up and it says, look, I need to ask you two questions before you can create this shell of the program, this blank database. First, where do you want it stored? And secondly, what's its name? First of all, I don't want it stored in the documents folder. So I'm going to click on the browse button here and click on it. It opens up. I'm going to click on the desktop because on the desktop I have my exercise folder and I'm going to store it in there. So I'm going to double click, open it up and then click OK and it's going to dump it. You can see the address here is now in the exercises folder and then over here is the name. Database 1, that's not going to work for me. So I'm going to click and drag and just select the name here before the .accdb. I don't want to delete the accdb because that stands for Access Database. I want to delete everything in front of the period or in front of the dot. If I delete anything after the dot, you're going to run into problems because remember, this extension, it's called an extension right here, which, which I cover in my Windows Vista Level 1 training videos. That just tells the computer here which program is going to open up this file. ACCDB is going to be open up in Access. If it was .docx, it would be Microsoft Word's document. If it was .xlsx, that means it would be Microsoft Excel. So you don't want to touch that, okay? All right, so I'm going to click and drag and just select this generic name here, and I'm going to type in inventory. So I still kept the .accdb. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on the create button. It's going to dump it right in that folder. So it opens up and it does two things. First of all, but the title bar has got computer inventory and it also opened up the first table here. Kind of as a courtesy, like just saying, look, the foundation of any database, you got to have a table. So go ahead and start typing your fields, but what if I'm not ready? I can go ahead and click close and then create a table myself again and we'll do that in just a second. Because right now all we want to do is just learn how to create a simple database. Maybe you don't have time to start creating tables now, that's why I closed out of it. So I have no objects, at least I don't have any tables here. But nonetheless my database or at least the shell of the program is created so I can come back in here and I'll, again we'll show you how to create the tables and all the other objects like forms, reports, and queries. So if I go ahead and I click close and I close out of the database, remember it's stored in the exercise folder here, double click, open it up, and there it is, computer inventory. I can double click and open it up again. Again, there's nothing, no objects in my database, there's no tables, so I don't have a foundation here. It's just a shell of a program, which means nothing until I actually start creating tables to store my data in it. But nonetheless, now you know how to create your database. That's the first step. Let's go ahead and create another database, but this time let's use one of Microsoft Office's templates here. So I can either go ahead and close out of here or click on the Office Logo button, come down to New, and then it opens up the program to create a new database, okay? Or I can close out, you know, close out of the folder here and go back to my shortcut key, double click on that, and it opens it up, the same window here. So again, I can click on a blank database or I can use one of the default templates down below here. First of all, if you look over in the left navigation pane here, you've got what they're featuring, what your local templates are. In other words, when you install Access 2007, it installs some of the templates on your computer locally. It doesn't install all of them because there's just so many, and you may not use all of them, but just the most common ones are popular ones they store. You also have access to the Office Online templates like Business. Just make sure you have an internet connection so it can download them to your computer here. So I have Business, Education, and so forth. I'm going to go back to Business here. And let's say I want something like a contact management database. I want to keep track of all of the customers who want to be able to create a contact list of their addresses, well, whatever they have in the database here. Just click once on it. Over to the right hand side, it's going to ask us the two questions again. It's going to say, okay, what name do you want to give it and where do you want to store it on your computer? Also, because you can download the template, you also have user ratings, what they think of the database, like four out of five stars, which I guess is okay. So again, I can come in here and rename this just by clicking and dragging and selecting 
everything before the dot a c c d b okay and then just start typing and saying well this will be the client and then where do I want to dump it it always wants to dump it in my documents folder which I guess it's okay but I'm gonna scroll over just a little bit click on my browse button and say no it's on the desktop it's in my exercise folder that's where I want to dump my client contacts database click OK so now the address here is pointing to that exercise folder and then all I have to do is click on download give it a few seconds and then what's interesting is that these databases have some help features like this help menu pops up this help menu pops up you can expand it read a little bit more about how to use this template some of the tables the fields the reports the queries they created and how they work in fact if you click and scroll down a little bit I mean that's great so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of here and assume that you're gonna read all that and then also they have it looks like a form you see a little icon it's purple a purple lineup at the top look down in your form section here see it's getting started with contacts it's right there it automatically pops up so whoever created this database actually created a little startup with some videos that you can watch and click on watch the videos and it'll give you some nice little basic steps to understanding this database and how it works okay which is pretty fun you can click on the link you can do what they do you can embed the videos in fact if you look at this when I hover over it the video isn't really embedded in the form but it's actually linked to a website but they got a picture of it where you can go ahead and click and you can see that link it links to office microsoft.com access using contacts in other words it will call forth a video when you click on it. In fact, I'll go ahead and click on it and we'll see how long it takes. Oh, and then it pops open on their website to go ahead and watch this and then you click on that. It pops open the video and you can watch it, which is really fun. I don't know if you can hear that, but the speakers are going. It's telling us how to uh, use the forms here, but it's playing. If you want to maximize the screen, you've got your slider. You can click up and down to go forward in the video or backwards. In any case, I'm going to close out of that. So that's really nice. I'm going to close out of this window here. I'm going to close out of that form here. And it's got the contact form here where I can start entering in the first name, last name, the company, the job title. It looks like the employee's email address, business, the first name, the last name, the company. I mean, some of the basics here for your contacts you want to keep track of. And again, getting started is nothing more than just a form. If I double click on that, see how it opens up. I mean, it looks really professional and really nice. So for those of you who are creating a database for another company, I mean, you can give them some tips like they do here, some helpful points when they're using this database, what to expect, what to look out for. That means also you probably have to create a training video or you can create a PDF file or something that links onto your website that explains a little bit more about, you know, what's going on with the database. So I'm going to close out of here. In any case, those videos are great to watch so you understand what this database is all about, how to create records, how to add records, or in this case, contacts from Outlook if you use Microsoft Outlook. So without going too much in depth into this, just keep the basics here. You have some tables which store all the data. You have some queries, some defaults, what they think is important that will be helpful for you managing your database, some forms, some reports, and then macros and also modules, which macros will cover in, in the later levels of access, but for right now we're sticking just with the four reports, forms, queries, and tables. Okay. Well, at the very least, you know how to use another template. But for us, we're going to start from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this database. I'm going to go to my exercise folder here. And you can see now we have the uh, template database that we just created, Client Contacts, which we downloaded from Microsoft. And then our own, which has nothing in it but just the shell, the program, computer inventory. In these next set of training videos, we're going to actually start from scratch. But if you're ambitious and you want to go ahead and use a template and figure it out, do some reverse engineering, how they created their reports, their forms. You can even change elements of their database, like their tables. If they have a field in there, like an address, you don't want it, delete it. And go ahead and use the remainder fields. But again, at least we know how to create a blank database or download a template from Microsoft. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.